Hey, Ron here from Military Images with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. Today, I want to take you to Chestnut Street in Philadelphia in January 1864. We're deep into the third year of the Civil War. Gettysburg and Vicksburg have turned the tide of the war in favor of the Union, but war weariness has set in as army recruitments are flagging tens of thousands of men of color are joining the army to fight for their freedom. The Emancipation Proclamation issued a year ago has liberated hundreds of thousands from bondage as the Union armies have made incursions into Southern territory. Meanwhile, in this January 1864 in Philadelphia along Chestnut Street, you can imagine the wagons traveling down the street, carriages, passers-by walking down the sidewalks, doing their shopping, running their errands, the sounds of the town, the jingling of bells, footsteps, horses' hooves, all of those sounds are around you. And as you're walking down the street, you notice in a storefront a photograph hanging in the window a small window, small window, a small photograph in a window. The photograph is the photograph that you see here. It's this man with a horribly scarred back. You're not alone. There's many people, probably some who are gathering in groups to stare at this image and wondering what in the heck is going on. I want to read a newspaper account from Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania newspaper, that sheds a little bit of information and a little bit of eyewitness accounting about what was going on here. So here we go. Quote, sometime since might have been seen in certain windows along Chestnut Street, a carte de visite, that's a popular French format of photography, representing a colored man whose back was seamed with scars caused by the lash of the brutal plantation overseer. It was said to have been photographed from life at New Orleans and, is authentic, and its authenticity vouched for by gentlemen of integrity. Notwithstanding all this, many refused to believe in its genuineness. I'm going to stop the reading of the report there for a moment. Imagine you're seeing this for the first time and folks around you are not believing that it's real. They do not believe this is an actual photograph of an enslaved man who has been whipped, the victim of the lash. Well, the story behind this is that it is real. And this photograph was taken from life in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at a place called Camp, Camp Parapet on April 2nd, 1863. The reason for the photograph is part of the Army's documentation of what they were finding as they moved through the South, mostly from a surgical point of view, various wounds and injuries that were being attended to by the medical staff. They were beginning to use photography to record their treatments, their surgeries, and also in some cases, images like this, which defied imagination. This particular image was sent to Washington, D.C. with a note, part of a report. And the report was written by an assistant surgeon in the 47th Massachusetts Infantry. His name is Frederick Mercer. And the note is this. He's addressed it to his commanding colonel. He says, I have found a large number of the 400 contrabands. Contrabands is a term used in that time period for enslaved people who were taken on the Union side. They were contraband, contraband material. Contrabands examined by me to be as, as badly uh, lacerated as the specimen re represented in the enclosed photograph. So what the surgeon is saying is that this man here in the photograph is not alone many of the 400 individuals that he personally examined had similar scarring on their backs. 
So this image makes its way to Washington, D.C., and from there, it is widely published. So it's published in a photographic. I mentioned carte de visite. Uh, this is a popular French format that landed in the United States, coincident with the beginning of the Civil War, and became very popular. It was cheap, easy to reproduce, and hundreds of thousands of images could be made. And that is how this particular image winds up in a storefront on Chestnut Street in Philadelphia and other cities across the North. It also winds up being in Harper's Weekly, the popular illustrated news magazine uh, a few months later, actually in the summer of 1863. And so it gets even more press that way. And nowadays it continues to be an image that is discussed most recently, it's the inspiration for the movie Emancipation. So I want to continue the news report from that Pennsylvania newspaper to give you a sense of just how the townspeople came to understand how real this was. They did it from another event that happened in the neighboring state of Maryland. Here's the rest of the report. All these doubters are now taken aback by something of a similar character which has just come to light here and which shows up Maryland slavery, mild as it is said to have been of late years. A reporter says, quote, a fine looking large colored man presented himself yesterday at the colored headquarters on Chestnut Street. That's the recruiting station for Union soldiers and when stripped for examination was found to have his back cut up in a most horrible manner. It was ascertained that about 12 years since his master who resided in Maryland had given him these lashes because he had not quite cut the amount of wood he was directed to do in one day. This poor fellow has been very badly cut but he passed a successful examination and was mustered into the service. Let us all thank Providence that he has so ordained that Pennsylvania shall no longer be wedded to a state tolerating the beastly institution. So there you have it. The realities of the whipping of slaves, how it was documented through this photograph, which is so well known, and how people in a street in Chest or Chestnut Street in Philadelphia didn't believe it at first but eventually came to understand that this was part of the condition of slavery. So until the next time, we'll see you on the trail.